the debate today about uh, pushing the Palestinians into the Sinai is, is a very old one. It's consistent with the ideology and the methodology uh, of Zionism. Wherever European settles outside of their continent and established colonies, this was accompanied by two processes. One, land grabbing, and two, ethnic cleansing. We've seen this in the Americas, in the Caribbean, in Australia, in Africa. Wherever they went, this was the, the, the method, land grabbing, and ethnic cleansing. The Zionist project to colonize Palestine is no different. It was based on the same principles, the same processes. Wherever this process occurred, some people were exterminated entirely. And in cases where they were not exterminated, they were locked onto, onto reservations. So you have reservations in America and in Canada. That's the indigenous people. We see a similar pattern unfolding in Palestine today, where the indigenous Palestinians are forced into enclaves in their own land. That is, those who chose to remain after 1948 and 1967. But underlying this process of ethnic cleansing and land grabbing, is a peculiar ideology, an ideology which is fundamentally racist in nature. And we can see this from the disclosures, the diary entries, the reports, the, the, the public statements by Zionist leaders from Theodor Herzl to Benjamin Netanyahu. It's one, one discourse that we are civilized and the indigenous people are barbaric. This is no different from what occurred in South Africa. When the Dutch came to South Africa, they said the Africans were barbaric and they brought civilization. They spoke about the white man's burden to civilize the darker races. So uh, this is where we are today. All these leaders from Herzl, right through uh, Israel Zangwill and uh, that Vladimir Jap Japotinsky, and Joseph Weitz, uh, and Netanyahu, and Gallant, they all had this, this uh, uh, preoccupation with uh, expelling the in indigenous people. In fact, uh, Joseph Weitz, he wrote that in 1967, he wrote in Davad newspaper that uh, as early as 1940, we were convinced, we, we came to the conclusion that there is no space in this land for the two peoples. There is no place in this land except for, for Jews. The Arabs had to leave. So the, the whole question of, you know, the debate today about uh, pushing the Palestinians into the Sinai is, is a very old one. It's consistent with the ideology and the methodology uh, of Zionism. And so it was no, no surprise, you see, that in 1948, three quarters of the Palestinian people were expelled from their homeland. This never occurred anywhere else in, in modern history, where an entire people were forced off their land. Now, soon after the, the expulsions, and Israel declared its independence, on the, it, it applied to the United Nations for membership on the 15th of May, 1948. And the Security Council did not look at it. Later that year, they also applied in, in, in December for membership and it was rejected. The application was rejected by the Security Council. It was not until May 1949 that Israel was given membership admitted to the United Nations as a member state. But there were conditions. Israel was accepted under the condition that it adhered to the Charter and that it, 
implemented Resolution 194 of, of December 2nd, 1948, which called for the return of the refugees. See, now this has not happened since 1948. This resolution has been reaffirmed by the General Assembly every year, every year. And when a resolution is reaffirmed with such frequency and unanimity uh, by the international community, it is uh, regarded as what we call con uh, customary international law, you see. So Israel, in effect, uh, has not fulfilled the, the, the terms of its, of its membership, the conditions for its membership into the UN, you see. And it's just not uh, Resolution 194. Uh, the right of return is, is enshrined in other bodies of law. Refugee law, humanitarian law, uh, human rights law, uh, in, the, in the Refugee Convention. Uh, all these bodies of law assert, affirm, uphold the right to return to one's land. Today we see just the opposite that the people of, 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 of Gaza forced into the southern part of the enclave and threatened with expulsion uh, uh, openly by Israeli officials to the Sinai. This is contrary uh, 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 to international conventions, uh, standards, uh, morality, and as such, uh, it is time that the, the world community the, the, the community, the, the real community of civilized countries, nations, revisit the, the terms of Israel's membership into the UN and suspend it for not fulfilling, you know, the terms of its membership. You may say there is no precedent to this. Well, there was a precedent. In 1974, South Africa was uh, suspended from the UN. You see? And so there is a precedent that the General Assembly can take such, such measures against Israel and suspend it because it, it, it breached the terms of its, of its uh, uh, membership. But not only this, it also established an apartheid system in Palestine. And there are double reasons why it should be suspended from the UN. <music>